Hello everybody and welcome. My name is Soraka Toshiko, proud member of Goonswarm Federation and Comma Fleet. And today I will show you how to safely travel through Nullsec space using an interceptor. So what is so special about Null Security Space? There are some things, but the most important in my opinion is that there can be bubbles. Bubbles come in three different tastes as interdiction spheres that are launched by interdictors warp disruption fields that are being well projected by heavy interdiction cruisers and the mobile small the mobile medium and the mobile large warp disruptors those are nice de deployable structures here those little boxes that will project an area or a sphere uh, around them in which area of effect you cannot warp. Thus, they are called bubbles. Those bubbles, they will either be installed or um, launched at gates. So if somebody jumps in to that bubble, he cannot warp away and will be killed by the baddies camping at said gate or the bubbles will be installed somewhere before or after a gate so you will be dragged into said bubble or stopped by it because if you imagine your warp path as a line and the bubble is installed somewhere 500 kilometers before or after or within 500 kilometers before or after the ending point of your warp path you will be affected by the bubble. So that's some background knowledge to keep in mind. To avoid those bubbles, you can either bounce over celestial objects, so you don't warp straight from point A to point B, but you bounce over a third point that is not in direct line. So you can either use celestial objects or some anomalies, whatever. However, there's still a risk that the enemy used more than one bubble so you could still end up in one how can you prevent that you could use an interceptor as you can see here it has a roll bonus that it's immune to all three sorts of bab babbles bubbles yes that's the only ship class, not here, only the malediction, but interceptors um, in general. And you can also render Tech 3 cruisers able to be immune to bubbles. However, this requires a certain module and Tech 3 cruisers are a little bit slower and not as agile as an interceptor because Apart from being immune to bubbles, an interceptor has some very nice features that we're gonna have a look at. We just enter simulation mode and turn this to completely basic stats here. Okay, here we go. So if we look at the malediction, which I think is a very, very good taxi interceptor, uh, we will see it has got a very high maximum velocity even without prop mods installed, it nearly reaches 600 meters a second, which is really quick. It gives us 8 AU warp speed, which is really, really, really fast, even without anything changing that. And an align time of 3.25 seconds, which also is rather quick. And last but not least, it has a pretty low signature radius meaning it doesn't receive as much damage from bigger rockets or torpedoes or whatever, and it takes the enemy longer to lock onto it. And, well, scan resolution is also fairly high, but we don't need this to travel around. So the purpose of this video will be to show you how to fit an interceptor, or in this case, specifically the malediction, uh, to travel around in our security space. This ship will not be able to do anything else but traveling. Okay, so 
no offensive modules, nothing here. So we don't really need that scan resolution. On the other hand, an interdictor, uh, interceptor, sorry, uh, interceptor is rather squishy. You see here only 3,506 basic hit points. Um, oh, and let me just say some of these or many of these uh, values will be altered by my skills. So they will look or could look different on your end, but just as a comparison. Okay, so as I just said, hit points are rather low. So what's the main idea behind using an interceptor for traveling through Nullsec? The main idea is to be so quick that you cannot be caught and this on multiple levels. Because this doesn't only apply to warp speed or to the basic speed here, but it also, and that's the one most important, is the align time. So what is the align time? The align time gives you the time your ship will enter to meet the criteria needed to enter warp from a complete halt. So for example, you just jump in from Stargate A into System B. So you end up on the other side at the Stargate. And when you then want to warp somewhere, you will need to align to your destination, but you will also need to speed up to at least 75% of your current maximum speed. However, I picked my words very carefully when I said this shows the time your ship needs to meet the criteria to enter warp because you will not warp after 3.25 seconds in this case. To understand this, I prepared a blackboard and there will be some horrible painting or drawing or whatever um, on my side here. So let me show you this. You need to understand how servitics work. So let's just use this as a time um, axis here. Zero, uh, second zero from the servitic up to second four. And we always keep in mind. Just move it around here. Um, those 3.25 seconds. Okay. So what do we want to do? At second zero of the server take, just coincidentally, uh, we just really hit warp to at exactly second zero. And as I told you, oh wow. Have you ever tried writing with your mouse? Looks like this then. Okay. So at exactly second zero of the server take, you give the command warp to Stargate, ABC, whatever. What will happen now is nothing because you first need to cover uh, your own latency. And let's just say that's about 0 0.2 seconds, okay? So within this time span, nothing at all happens. At this point in time, your, hey, I want a warp request, reaches the server. Until the next full second of server tick, nothing will happen. At second one, the server acknowledges your warping request and your ship will start aligning. Let's just write a little A here. Break gate cloak, start aligning and building up speed. Funny thing is, if there's some guy around who has a latency of 0 0.1 seconds rather than your 0 0.2 that we just take as an example here, he will be able to see you even earlier breaking gate code cloak than you will yourself. So at zero at, at second one, you will appear on grid, but you will only be able to see yourself decloak at um, 1.2 or another fleet mate with uh, so 
uh, with a latency of 0 0.2 seconds will also only be able to see you at second 1.2 of the server tick. So you will st start aligning and building up speed. And the server will check if your ship meets the criteria you need to enter warp, meaning proper alignment and at least 75% of speed each second of the server tick. So at second one, you got it, nothing will happen. Second two, so second two after the server acknowledged your warping request, one, two, we're at second three of the server tick now, still nothing happens because we're at second 3.25. Um, of a line time, so we need second three, and still nothing will happen. At second 3.25 from the server acknowledging your warping request, your ship would meet all criteria needed to warp, but what will happen is still nothing because the server only checks at each full second. So you will need to wait until the end of this second for the server to again check if your ship meets the criteria and only then you will finally warp. Wow, what an arrow. Okay, but I guess I got across the point. So what's really, really important to understand here is that an align time of 3.25 seconds when it comes down to warping or time needed to enter warp will just have the same effect as an align time of 3.25 nine nine seconds in fact you could even reduce this to th uh, three point zero one that is or has the same effect when it comes down to entering warp from a complete halt so the idea behind using the interceptor here is to be able to align quicker and enter warp quicker than your enemies are able to lock you. So how can we achieve this? We need something to reduce our align time and you guessed it, there are some nice modules here. The ones reducing your align time the most are called inertial stabilizers and of course the Tech 2 versions are more capable than the Tech 1 versions so those are the ones we're going to use. And there also is a rig that I recommend, it's called the small, oh, hang on, here we go, small low friction nozzle joints. Tech 2 again, this will reduce our inertia modifier. And it also has a drawback. What's the drawback? Let me see. Uh, at the expense of armor amount. Okay, so we can live with that because we're rather squishy to begin with. But we need speed. That's our top priority. Our top priority is to come uh, to get under two seconds of align time because that's what is commonly referred to as an insta-warping interceptor or insta-warping ship. There are very, very little ships that will be able to lock you if you have an align time of under two seconds. It is possible, it is even possible to lock a pot before it can enter warp, okay? So even that is possible, but it's highly unlikely. There is, however, no 100% security. Not in real life, not in EVE. We're just tweaking the, the chances to your advantage. So, as I said, 
we have those small low friction nozzle joints and this alone reduces our inertia modifier from uh, our align time sorry from 3.25 seconds to 2.8 seconds so that really is something because we already went below the three second barrier now we dish in one inertial stabilizer and we're down to 2.29 seconds however compared to the 2.8 seconds from before this doesn't really make a difference because we will still only end warp at after three seconds so 2.25 or 2.80 doesn't really matter because you remember it just boils down to all the same okay good um so we need something more not only one inertial modif uh, stabilizer but two and there you go we broke the magical barrier 1.98 seconds align time however we only got two more low slots available so even if we add two more inertial stabilizers because of the stacking penalty we only come down to 1.00 uh, sorry 1.77 seconds of align time so this doesn't take us anywhere we don't need those additional inertial stabilizers because they also have a downside uh, they will increase our signature radius not by really huge amounts but still okay so what else can we do with these low slots we can as i just mentioned before work on our hit points because that's the weak spot of an interceptor so why not just use a damage control and did you see that we just went up by a solid thousand hit points with these last low slot i'm gonna spare this for later <clears throat> because i don't want to use armor plates because armor plates while increasing your armor hit points of course they will also add weight to your ship thus badly influencing your align time so don't use armor plates but what we can use is for example a shield extender got this medium shield extender here and just remember 4300 hit points now we're up to 6500 so that's more than 2000 hit points more already so that really is something we can even add some more by adding this small shield extender so this gives us another 1100 hit points around so we're at some really good hit point um yeah level here however um you see that we have a very, very bad EM resist here. So EM damage will just melt our hit points that we just added here. So we need to do something about that. What can we do about it? We can use this EM ward amplifier here. This will give us, that's a passive module, and give us a much higher EM resist here, thus resulting in higher hit points as well. But now we have a problem because we don't have any spare mid slot to install a prop mod like the micro warp drive. This is why I remove the small shield extender. It just will cost us, yep, some hit points, but the possibility of burning back to the gate is much more important in my eyes okay you may come to a different conclusion i don't say this is the one perfect fitting here um, just try what works best for you i'm showing you what i believe is a very very good way to do it but there are many ways to do it but i feel i want to have uh, a micro warp drive 
um, here to give me the ability to use the MWD cloak trick to either get out of a gate camp unseen or to burn back to the gate or whatever. It never hurts to have a micro warp drive or to burn purchase, etc, etc. So I took away the small shield extender and now you see we have a pretty good EM resist here. So why do we need a pretty good EM resist? Because many, um, well not many, but there are guys that are in smart bombing battleships. And they will just sit there cloaked, wait for an interceptor to warp to the stargate they're sitting on, and then suddenly decloak, activate all their smart bombs at once and blow up a ship like an interceptor if it doesn't have proper tank. And because most of those interceptor guys, uh, if they do anything about their hit points at all, uh, they just install shield extenders and no resist modules rather often. And because shields often have their weak spot at EM, that's exactly the damage type that they're gonna use. So you better have some EM resist. However, we have a weak spot here with the thermal damage resist. But on the other hand, we have a rather good thermal damage resist here in our armor. So that basically levels out, sort of. But as I said earlier, we still have some empty low slot down here. So what can we do with this? We could either um, try to install a warp core stabilizer, which doesn't work because of fitting issues. What I decided to do is add an adaptive nano plating tech to, which will add another uh, 600 hit points and strengthening our armor resists even more. So that that is basically the result here. Oh, and let's just activate that small hyperspatial velocity optimizer. So we're getting our basic warp speed up from 8 AUs per second to 10 AUs per second. And if we deactivate the micro warp drive here, we're down at below 2 seconds align time. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. A quickly aligning insta warp interceptor with very good hit points with pretty good resists and even the ability to use the micro warp drive or the um, MWD cloak trick. This is your null sec taxi. That was it for now. Maybe I show you in the next time how to use it, how to fly it, but that should be rather obvious. You just warp, jump through the gate, warp again, etc, etc. There are some things you can work on to even increase your survivability further, but that's the basic idea behind it. So thanks for watching. Please feel free to leave any comments, requests, questions, whatever under this video or contact me in game. As I said, my name is Soraka Toshiko. I am that handsome little guy here in the lower left corner. And I also need to say thanks a lot to Daniel Deluxe. He's the guy providing the music you can hear in the background and I promised him I will tell you guys about this. Oh, I get many, many messages because I'm an important person. Sorry for that. We're gonna turn it off the next time, uh, the next time I record a video. In the meanwhile, for the third or fourth time, <laughs> thanks for watching. And this time, really, really bye bye.